<clears throat> Thursday, this is for Thursday, August 6th, 2020. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Throwback Thursday. Good morning to you all on this wonderful Thursday morning. I hope you're all ready for games, activities, and all the fun that we do have planned for today. But before I begin, I would like to introduce myself. Cue the music. My name is Naomi. I've been coming up to day camp for about two years. It would have been my third year coming up, but it's my third year and I get to do it virtually this time, which is really cool. Um, I love the camp. I miss you all, but I'm here today to kind of kickstart our day. Now, you may be wondering what today's theme is. Well, it is Throwback Thursday. Now, I'm gonna explain what I'm wearing really quick. So I am throwing it back to the 80s. A great time for music, movies. The outfits were kind of questionable, but I went for a more tame outfit to represent the 80s. So I got a fun scrunchie to hold back my hair. Crimped hair, because who doesn't love crimped hair? A crew neck, as you can see, that is tucked into my jeans that are a little too big. But that's what you do in the 80s. And I also brought some props. I have a Michael Jackson record, which is, you know, one of the biggest soundtracks to the 80s. I also have a Lionel Richie <laughs> record. Some of the kids might not know who this is, but the parents probably do. So I figured I'd put him in here to show him some love. What did you guys plan to wear for third? <laughs> Gosh, I can't do this. What did you guys plan to wear on Throwback Thursday? If you want, you can use the hashtag DocsAdayStar or tag us at DocsAdayStar to show us your cool, funky Throwback Thursday outfits. So, starting off today, we're going to be looking at a story about Eliza DeLorme and her cousin, Edward Beaupre, in The Willow Bunch Giant. I got it! Yeah! And cut. I mean, and go. Hey everyone, it's me, Sarah, again. Welcome back to Daystar's Corner. Today's book is called The Big Tees, a story of Eliza DeLorme and her cousin Edward Beaupre, the Willow Butch Giant. I will just be giving a summary of this book, but the information about it is linked below. Now, boom shakalaka, boom shakalaka, go! Eliza was a young girl who loved to tease. She had fun teasing her brothers, her cousins, and her uncles especially. One day, her mother told her that the family would be coming to visit. Eliza was so excited to see them, but especially excited for her cousin Edward to come so that she could tease him. They were the same age and she always liked poking fun at him. When Edward and the family arrived, Eliza was surprised to see that he had grown so big and tall. Even though she teased him a few times about different things, he just ignored it all and didn't let it bother him. One day, the men were going out hunting and Edward was told he would have to stay back with Eliza and the kids. He was not happy about that at all. Eliza teased him about it, and finally Edward got so fed up that he picked her up and put her on the roof. In the end, Eliza realized that a better way to talk to her cousin was to be nice to him. She complimented him and was kind, and eventually he got her down, and they had a great adventure together after that. That's just some of the story. If you'd like to read more, the link to the book is in the description down below. The grandfather teaching of wisdom can be used in helping us to be careful of what we do, how we act, and what we say, and who our friends are. Eliza had to show wisdom and realize that there was a better way for her to be close to her cousin rather than teasing him. When she showed wisdom and kindness, they were able to have lots of fun together. We have to practice using wisdom and self-control to make good decisions in life. Eliza also had to show self-control by not teasing her cousin, even though it's something she normally would do. Self-control is today's fruit of the spirit, and it means listening and acting in a way that uses all of the fruits of the spirit. We can ask ourselves these questions when we need to practice self-control. Am I showing love? Am I being patient? Is this wise for me to do? Self-control also means being in control of our thoughts, our words, and our actions. If you feel that what you are doing is wrong and you have to hide, steal, or lie about it, you probably shouldn't be doing it. 
We can use self-control by thinking before we are going to say something that might be hurtful. We may not be able to control what someone else does to us, but we can choose how we answer back to them. The verse for today is Proverbs 16 verse 32, and it says, controlling your temper is better than capturing a city. From this verse, we can learn that we will do more and feel better if we control ourselves and our temper. To have self-control is more powerful than to be a warrior or someone capturing a city by force. Our Creator has shown us how to live and have self-control. He has a son named Jesus who came and lived on this earth a long, long time ago to show humans a better way to live and how to love others. Many times he was treated so badly for things that he didn't deserve. He even died for things that he didn't deserve, for all of the wrong things that other people had done so that they could be forgiven. And yet, he showed a lot of self-control and love towards others while he lived on earth. We're going to learn more about this tomorrow. It takes a lot of strength to walk away from a bad situation instead of trying to get revenge or say something mean or hurtful to someone. Just like Eliza had to practice using her self-control to not say some of the mean things that she wanted to say. Well, that's all for today, folks. Here's a hint for tomorrow's story. I'm so excited and I hope you are too. Now, here's Sarah C with an experiment that involves water and walking. I wonder what that could mean. Let's check it out. Hey everyone, my name is Sarah and today for our experiment, we are going to be doing walking water. So these are the materials that you need. You'll need seven cups and you're going to fill four of them with water. You're also gonna need some food coloring, a stir stick, I'm using a spoon, and six pieces of paper towel. So for the first step, as I said before, you're gonna fill four cups with water. As you can see, I have mine here. And then you're also gonna have three other cups with no water. You're gonna separate the cups with water with the cups that don't have water. Just like this. And you're gonna add food coloring to each of the cups that have water in it. So I have four different colors and I'm going to add two drops to each cup. So I'm gonna start with my farthest cup. I'm gonna add some drops of blue. And I'm gonna add some yellow in my next cup. Just like that. I'm going to add some red. And I'm going to add... Hmm, I'm getting food coloring everywhere. <laughs> and then I'm going to add some cream. You can always wear gloves as well. So it might not get on your hands then. And then I'm going to use my stir stick and I'm just going to mix in the colors so that it is all in the cup and spread the cups. And once you're done that, now you can use the paper towel. So for the paper towel, what you're going to do for each one of the six pieces is you're gonna take it and you're gonna fold it in half. Just like that. And then you're going to fold it again in half, just like a hot dog, until you have pieces like this. And I have six pieces that I already folded, just like this. Then you're going to add each piece in between the cups. I'm going to put one in there. I'm going to put one here. So one is in the water and then one is in the empty cup. So there should be two in each water cup. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait and you're gonna see how the water is going to go into the cups that don't have water and make new colors. And 
to show. I'm going to do another video just to kind of show the setup of what I have and then an updated video of what it looks like. And this is the experiment after a few days. And as you can see, the water that was originally on the four cups has now moved into the three cups and has made different colors. So the red and the yellow have made orange and yeah. So traveling water. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you have been enjoying day camp and all of the fun activities we get to do together. We can't wait to see you tomorrow for our last day of camp. Take some time today to think of ways you can show self-control so that you can bear fruit.